Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. This is the next episode in the Coding a 2D Game Engine in Java series. In the last episode, what we did, I believe, was we were doing Snap to Grid. It's been a while. In this episode, what we're going to be doing is continuing uh, our debug drawing facilities by adding debug drawing for boxes and circles because it'll be helpful for the physics engine portion of the series, which I would highly recommend to also follow because we will be using some of the functions from that series uh, particularly in this episode when we're rotating boxes and stuff. Okay, but let's take a look at how we're going to do the drawing of the boxes and the circles, and then we'll go ahead and implement those. Okay, guys, so I hope you can trust me when I say that drawing circles and squares should not be too difficult. It really isn't, um, especially with the help of our function uh, jmath rotate. This function will really make our lives a lot easier. So for boxes, how do you draw a box? Well, first of all, what you need is a half size, right? Or a full size, right? Just the dimensions of the box. So how big is it in the width and the height? And then you need the center of the box. And so once you have both those things, you can actually draw a box just like this, right? And how do you do that? Well, you just go center plus half size, and then that gets you this point, center minus the half size. And then you just do this point plus the half size and the y and then you do this point minus the half size and the y or just anything along those lines what that's going to do is it's going to give you these four points so once you have these four points you can also check and see if there's a rotation right so what if they want to rotate at 45 degrees well if they want to rotate at 45 degrees all you do is you rotate this point around this point so rotate every single one of the points around the center by 45 degrees then you just draw a line from him to him him to him him to him and him to him and then you end up with a box and of course this would actually be rotated because if we rotated all the points already then it's gonna be actually something like this where you have some sort of rotated box and it works just fine okay what about circles though so circles, we're going to be doing sort of the same way. What we'll actually do with these is we won't really care about the center at first. So as you may know, there's something called the unit circle, right? And the unit circle is basically just like a bunch of points. Uh, you know, you have like this, this, something like that. And what does it make? Well, it makes a circle. How do you get these points though? Right? Because if we can get these points, then all we have to do is draw a line, draw a line, draw a line. And then once you draw a line between all of them, you end up with something that resembles a circle. And the more segments you have, the more circle-like it will be. Well, these points are actually really easy to get, right? This is just the point zero radius, right? So this first point right here is zero radius, rotated zero degrees. And then the next point would be zero radius, once again, rotated by whatever increment you're choosing degrees. I'm going to say increment degrees. And the more increments you have, the smaller granularity like this is, the better a circle you will get. So if you're incrementing in, let's say, 30 degree increments, then you'll get two points between every single one of these, right? It'll be zero then this would be 30 degrees, then you would get 60, then you get 90, so on and so forth. If you did it in 15 degrees, you would get an extra point in between there, and it would give you an even better circle. And so just changing this increment will really change how it works. Except the way that we'll think about it is we'll think about it in segments, right? So we'll think about it, we want 12 segments of a circle. And then to get our increment, all we do is 360 because there's 360 degrees in a circle divided by the number of segments. And then that will give us some number that we can increment by. And we'll literally just rotate zero radius around the degrees. That'll give us a point. And then we'll draw a line between every single one of the points. And what we do to get it in the appropriate place is we just add the center. So like say the circle is actually located over here. Well, we just add the center to all the points and then it will draw a new circle over here just like it should. Okay, so that's a very <laughs> brief primer. If anything didn't make sense whatsoever, just let me know and then we can go over it in a little bit more depth in another tutorial or I can help you out through the comments.
Okay, let's try and code these now. I am back inside of our debug drawing facility or debug draw class inside of our game engine. So I just added the stubs. You know, we have the add line 2D methods and I added add box 2D and add circle methods just so that we know what those are. What I'm going to do is I'm literally going to copy this because we're going to have very similar parameters and this is going to be like the final. Remember how we overloaded this a bunch of times so that you can supply different parameters. We're going to do the same thing with add box 2D. And we will take in, instead of a vector 2f from and to, we will take in vector 2f center and vector 2f dimensions. And those dimensions, like I said, is just going to be the size, like width and height. So x would be the width and y would be the height. And we'll take in color and lifetime once again. And now we'll actually be able to use this add line 2d method. And that's why these ones are actually a lot easier to add than it was to do the line 2d because we can just reuse what we have already. So like I said, first we have to get all the vertices of the box. So, and speaking of that, that means we're forgetting one more thing, which is float rotation. So we also want to allow them to rotate the box by any amount that they want. And then I'll move these down so you guys can see that. So they will be able to rotate this box as well. Let's go ahead and first of all, we'll say vector 2f min equals new vector 2f. We'll use the center dot sub new vector 2f dimensions dot divide by 2.0f. And I don't believe we have divide. It's weird. It works in my original project. Maybe it's in a different library and I just don't know. We'll just multiply by 0.5f because that's the same thing. And remember, we wrap these in new vector 2f's. So that way we don't, we're don't we making copies and then we're operating on copies instead of the actual thing passed in. And so basically what we're doing here is we're just saying, okay, take the center and subtract half the size, which will get us the bottom left corner. Then we can do the same thing for the top right corner, except we'll just say uh, add instead of divide. So we'll say to the center plus the half size, which is just dimensions dot multiply by 0 0.5, half the size. Now using the min and the max, we can actually get every single corner of the box. So we will say vector 2f vertices, and we'll just initialize these straight out because we know we're only going to have four vertices. So we can say uh, new vector 2f min dot x min dot y. Think about this. This is the bottom left corner. Uh, we'll get the top left corner next, min.x, new vector 2f, min.x, max.y. And then we'll get the top right corner, new vector 2f, max.x, max.y. Then we'll get the bottom right corner, new vector 2f, max.x, min.y. It's important you think about exactly how these are working. And I forgot an equal sign. Because uh, we will need to know what order we actually built these in because we don't want to accidentally draw a line from the bottom left to the top right. That wouldn't look right. So now we can draw a line from here to here, here to here, here to here, and we get our box. Okay. Now we'll say if rotation does not equal 0, 0.0. So if they have something that they want us to rotate it by, we'll say for vector 2f vert in our vertices, we'll say jmath.rotate that vert around our rotation about our center. And remember this does operate on our vertices so we don't actually have to do anything. So now all our vertices will have been rotated and then we can simply just add the lines. We'll say add line 2D from vertices zero to vertices one with our dimensions or <laughs> with our color in our lifetime. I'm referencing old code which I have stroke width available to. And I'll copy these three times and we'll say also draw one from zero to three also draw one from one to two and you can also draw one from two to three which should be good and of course you could have just done like i said zero to one one to two two to three uh, if we look at this zero is bottom left one is top left and then bottom left two three is bottom right and then this would be top left to top right and this would be top right to bottom right okay so kind of a weird order but it works let's test it real quick make sure that we didn't do anything dumb and mess up <laughs> well that would be me not on you guys of course so if we go into our scene which i think is in jade no it's in scenes okay 
If we go into our level editor scene, uh, I had this because I was testing some stuff. <laughs> what we'll do is we'll just say debug draw inside of our update method, add box 2D, and we'll say new vector 2F uh, 200, 200 for the center, and we'll say new vector 2F, we'll make it like 64 width by 32 height, just so that's a weird height and stuff to make sure it's working. And we'll rotate it by 30 degrees. And then we'll say color, new vector 3F, 0, 1, 0. It's going to be green and a lifetime of one frame so that it just gets drawn every frame. Okay, and it's actually behind my stuff. So let me just move this to 400, 200. And we should be able to see that. Okay, there we go. Yep, and we can see we got a box located at the correct position, rotated 30 degrees. Pretty cool. And we can do something cool. Just go up here and say float angle equals 0, 0.0f. And then instead of 30, we'll put angle. And then right down here. And don't worry if you can't see this and stuff. It's just debug code. I'm going to delete all this in just a minute. And I'll say angle plus equals 10.0f uh, times dt. So we'll have a spinning box now. We should. And if we look, you see that it is spinning very slowly. But nonetheless, let's up that just a little bit because we can. <laughs> all right. And we've got a spinning box. Pretty cool all with the use of debug drawing. Now let's go ahead and add our circle method so that we can draw circles as well. So if we go back into debug draw, actually before we do that too, let's add in the overloaded versions of these. So I'm gonna copy these because it's basically the same idea, except this is gonna be add box 2D now. So copy that, paste that. And then we want uh, these things. These are the required parameters and then everything else is optional. So then we'll do that and copy and paste them over this one as well. Then, and we still do have to add constants for common colors. Then what we'll do is we'll just copy this, paste, paste, and instead of from and to here, we will say center dimensions rotation. And then once again, down here, we'll say center dimensions rotation. All right, and there we go. Now we have the overloaded methods as well, so we don't have to call it with every single piece of information if you do not want to, right? You can just call it with the center dimensions rotation, and we'll color it green with a lifetime of one by default. Now the add circle methods. Uh, once again, I'm going <laughs> to go ahead and copy this guy. Paste it right here. So for a circle, add circle, what we need is we need the center and we need the radius. And we don't care about rotations with circles because it'll look the same no matter what. <laughs> okay, so if we have the center and the radius, how do we get all the points? Like I said, we just use that unit circle. So we can say vector 2f points equals new vector 2f, and I'm gonna initialize it to 12. 12 is our segment length. This is how many segments we'll have. And just to really exaggerate, I'm gonna initialize it to eight originally. So you can see how increasing the segments makes it look more like a circle. Now we'll say in increment, just like I said, is 360 over points dot length. And we're using an integer. You could just as easily use a float. It doesn't matter. But yeah, so just like I said, we do 360 divided by the length of our points or how many segments we want, and that'll work. And we'll say current angle equals zero. We're starting off at zero. We'll say for int i equals zero until i is less than points dot length i plus plus. Then we'll say vector 2f temporary equals a new vector 2f radius zero. That's the first point. Remember, we're just going radius zero, which is basically just the radius on the x axis. And then we'll rotate this. We'll say jmath the rotate temp according to our angle around zero since this is located at zero, zero. This is centered around zero, zero. And we'll say points i equals new vector 2f temp dot add center. So then we add in the center, like I said, to get that. Now, how do we draw the lines between these segments? We can actually draw them as we're creating the points, right? But we just have to make sure i is greater than zero. So we'll say if i is greater than zero, then we will add a line 2d from points i minus one to points i and we'll give it a new vector. Well, we'll give it the color and the lifetime that we have here. 
And so basically this will just draw a line from the previous point to the point we're currently on, which should be fine, right? And then lastly, we have to remember to say current angle plus equals increment. And everything should go smoothly. Then we'll have one more thing, which you'll see in just a second because we're actually missing something. <laughs> Let's go into our uh, level editor scene though and try this. We'll say float x, y up here like I have. And then you can just say debug draw to add circle. Center, we'll say, is a new vector 2f, x, y. Radius, we'll say, is uh, 64. Color, new vector 3f, 0, 1, 0, and 1. We'll say x plus equals 50 times 50f times dt. Y plus equals 50f times dt. Okay, let's play this, see what happens. All right, so we get a... A very blocky circle but look at this we're missing one line segment and also notice it's right next to our first point right if we remember we said our first point would be the right angle and we can actually see how this is true if we make this zero radius instead you'll notice that we'll be missing a segment in the top right of the circle so and circle very loosely see so now it's shifted over to here What's that telling us? It's telling us we're missing a line segment, the very last line segment. So what we can do is at the end, we'll say add line 2D. Points, points dot length minus one to points zero. So we add it from the last point to the first point to complete our circle. And then we'll just give it the color and the lifetime. And now if we run this, we get a full circle, which you can see. And that's not a circle, that is actually just an octagon. So let's make this a circle. Up it up to like 20 segments, and I think that should give us more of a circle looking segment. Yep, that is pretty circular to me. And you could of course go higher, but just remember the higher you go, the more intensive it is just to draw a single circle. So 20 looks good enough for me, but once again, you can change it if you want. Let's make those overloaded methods again real quick. I'm just going to copy these again from the AdLine 2D. And we'll paste them down here. And then we will copy these, paste them over this, paste them over this, copy add circle, paste, 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 paste. And then we'll change this to center radius. And this to center radius. Now we have our overloaded methods too. And so we can do whatever we want. We can also change the color. If we want our circle to be red, let's just change it to red over here. And now we have a red circle. So yeah, that's great. This is gonna be very helpful for our physics engine because we want to start checking to see whether two shapes are colliding and now we can just draw shapes wherever we want. But it's also very helpful for other things in your engine, just visualizing where things are, maybe invisible things uh, in your scene. So yeah. This has been drawing uh, circles and boxes in 2D for d our debug drawing facility. I hope you guys like this. If you did, please hit like and subscribe. And in the next episode, I'm not sure what we're going to be doing for the game engine, but for the physics engine, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be checking to see if boxes and circles are colliding. Thanks, guys. See ya.